funny with an SMG. <laughs> Just, doesn't that shift so fast? Like, it's violent. It's great. Yeah. I, I don't know why people dog on the SMG. I think the thing with the SMG is you've got to get a CSL tune on it. If you don't get a CSL tune, yes, it's garbage. I think from first to second, it can be a little chunky. But as a whole, like, it shifts wonderful. And then we talk about suspension. I know it's kind of getting on ISC a little bit. But the suspension feels fine in normal day-to-day -day driving. It's firm, but then we consider how low the car is. I mean, the car is pretty low. It is riding pretty good. The problem is, is when we hit the hard stuff, and that's not even that bad. Oh, it would have been fun if no one was in front of us to make that max out. Maybe on the way back, we'll find one? Yeah, let's see. And the car handles well. It needs an alignment after our long drive. The rev matching, like on, on downshifts, is the greatest. <laughs> this is something that, like, Damon and, and, well, actually, really Dave from DDE was talking about um, with his Lamborghini Super Legera, because it's a single clutch like this as well. And he really enjoys the, the shove in the back or the kick that you get from a single clutch. Uh, gearbox. I like it too. Um, I think the single clutch gearbox was made for people like me who really do enjoy that visceral, more violent kick in the back or neck shift. So for me, I like the SMG. When it goes out one day, yeah, we'll probably swap it out. But for the time being, let's just keep working on maintenance and other stuff like that. What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. I know it's been way too long. Let's blame it on the hot Arizona heat. It's been ridiculous and for some reason, almost the end of October, we're still talking like 100 degrees. And when it's that kind of temperature, the temp in the garage is nearly unbearable, which means it's really, really difficult to produce content. So the weather is going to change really, really soon. And I wanna talk about what are the plans for the channel for the next like six months, stuff like that. One of the big things that we're gonna work on is the M3 and more specifically, M3 rod bearings. We're gonna get these rod bearings done. Car's got 69,000 miles. Bearings were done under the recall at around 11 or 14,000 miles. So we were only in the 50, 60K range, but I want peace of mind. I really would like to tackle the big three. Rod bearings I can do for under $1,000. I can do all of that, get everything taken care of. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna order those really soon. I haven't yet posted a video and it's kind of choppy, but I want to show you the bumper. So if you remember me being prior videos, the bumper looked like garbage. Actually, I'll show you the bumpers up here. So the old bumper is up there. Now the new bumper is painted and it's PPF'd and I got the gaps pretty well dialed in here. It could be a little bit better there, but if I push down here, you can see there's really no flex. I actually had the factory piece in place here, but overall, I think it looks pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah, much better. Also, the window regulator was done on this car. I need to post a video on this on how to do it. There's so many videos out there. I'm not trying to clog up the internet, but what I found that was really interesting is you've got an adjustment here and an adjustment there which is super helpful for this tilt piece. The big thing is this ISC suspension, it's, I can't get it tuned where I want it. It's either, it hits the, the, the bumps and potholes so, so hard. It's like I'm hitting the bump stops and I'm transmitting all this energy throughout the car or the front's kind of wishy-washy soft. And then I still get that horrible feeling I would really like to go TC Klein or some Olin's or something high end that makes the car feel better as it is and nothing against ISC. It's just not the coilover suspension that I think works for me with this particular car. What I need to do is have a conversation with the wife about trying to get the suspension changed out to something better. Now the cost of that suspension would mean I could put that money towards getting the rear subframe reinforced. Should I do that instead? Or should I move forward with some coilovers or some suspension that doesn't make it feel like I'm riding in a Flintstone car? 
for the most part, it doesn't feel that way. But when you hit the bumps, oh my gosh, it is horrible. I still have Vanos to do. Vanos I'll take care of. Rear subframe's probably going to go out to Ling and, and um, in San Diego. I think I was quoted somewhere around three grand, something like that. I've already done like the diff bushings and stuff like that, so we don't really need to focus on that. But I definitely want to get the rear subframe reinforced. But that suspension is driving me up the wall. Now, once those big three are done, then we can start having fun and upgrading stuff. Next question. Do we upgrade stuff on this car and have fun with it? Or do we sell both cars, invest that money into something different and try a Porsche or an Aston Martin or something like that? I don't know, guys. We'll end the video here. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see. Do I keep working on this car? Do I sell both cars and get something different? Do I sell just the E30 and take that money, dump it into the M3? Or or question mark you guys tell me but for now let's pause the video here I'll be back I'm gonna order some rod bearings rod bolts stuff like that um, and then we're gonna produce some content so thanks for hanging on guys I really appreciate it it's been really frustrating not producing content but I'm glad that the weather is cooling down and then I'm back so I'll see you guys soon